Hey guys, welcome to my combat tutorial for Eve Echoes. In this guide, we're going to cover the theory behind damage, defense, as well as looking at ships, weapons, and talking a little bit about some calculations and NPCs. And then we're going to be doing a live uh, tutorial of combat on a missile boat, a tier 5 Caracal, dealing with a level 9 anomaly in Nullsec space, looking at some of the tips and tricks I use to make sure I get through those safely. If you like the content, please drop me a sub, it would be massively helpful. And if you want to join the Discord, we'll be getting a corp together. Um, so if you want to be part of that corp, the Discord link is in the description below. So let's start off with the damage types, electromagnetic, thermal, kinetic, and explosive. Electromagnetic being the best against shields, but the worst against armor, and explosive being the best against armor, but the worst against shields. And the scale goes up with kinetic being somewhere in the middle, but leaning better towards armor, and thermal being better against shields. But again, the difference between kinetic and thermal is, is more, um, or is less pronounced rather than the difference between electromagnetic and explosive. And then you can see the different types of weapons Weapons that deal the kind of damage. Lasers, mostly electromagnetic with thermal. Hybrid weapons, mostly thermal and kinetic. Projectiles, um, a little bit different than it is on EVE Online. You don't have ammo in EVE Echoes, so there is just basic damage for both missiles and uh, and projectiles, which I'll go into when we talk about these specific weapons. And drones, I will give you a brief word on that at the end of the weapons section. It's not clear in the EVE Echoes beta right now, but I have a feeling they are similar to missiles where they just deal a little bit of everything. And speaking of, this is the damage breakdown for missiles. So I'm just showing you a Caldari Nevi Heavy Missile Launcher. It's the same for all missile types, though. 25% of every damage type, making missiles the jack-of-all-trades weapon. It's good against shield, it's good against armor, it's generally going to serve you versus almost any type of uh, of, of defense. And this is why it's good in a lot of PvE situations, and it's why people favor missile boats when going ratting in Nullsec, because regardless of the damage or... Regardless of the ship that you're facing, you know that missiles are always going to be fairly good against them. That's why I use missiles in my tier 5 Caracal when I go um, ratting in Nullsec, because I know that missiles are going to be good, as well as having incredibly long range. Heavy Neutron Blaster is a hybrid weapon. You can see that it is mostly kinetic with a 62.1% split compared to a almost 40% um, value of damage coming from a thermal side of things. That makes... Um, Hybrid weapons pretty good against shield, but overall they are generally better against armor. A heavy beam laser, this is a, a laser weapon, as you may have guessed by the name, mostly electromagnetic and then a little bit of thermal. This means that this weapon is incredibly good against shields, but actually less good against armor, and will struggle versus armor tank ships uh, but will actually cut through a shield tank ship. If I ever see someone come at me in my Caracal with lasers, I actually just warp out of there because there's no way I can win that fight. The Caracal is a massive shield tank. And then finally, the auto cannons, the kinetic weapons. These are different to EVE Online, a little bit like the missile launchers are different to EVE Online because you don't have missiles or ammo to load into them, so they just have a basic form of damage. Their damage is split between thermal, explosive, and kinetic, with 40% essentially coming from both thermal and kinetic, and then essentially a 25-20% coming from kinetic. Uh, sorry, 40% almost coming from um, explosive and 40% almost coming from thermal with a 25% kinetic. This makes these, um, uh, these weapons essentially just as good against uh, shields realistically as as hybrid hybrid will be slightly better against shield because explosive is the worst form of damage against shielding but actually auto cannons fare all right versus shield and do very well versus armor auto cannons are actually a really good weapon choice in eve echoes so those are the four types of weapons and the four types of damage they deal let's talk about ships because there are there are many forms of defense in ships you'll hear people talk about shield tanking ships armor tanking ships and ones that are hybrid let's start off with a classic armor tank ship the amar omen 1700 armor hp compared to a smaller shield uh, and obviously then the structure hp when you look at the defense of a ship what you're really looking at right now is essentially the cumulative um effective hp from their shield armor and structure 
So the Omen is a classic defense, uh, a classic uh, armor tank. Uh, you can see the Vexer actually also more of an armor tank than the, the Omen, but the Vexer is a drone ship, so it actually has a much higher defense. Drone ships generally do have a much higher defense because they don't really need to have any uh, offensive capabilities apart from their drones. Uh, and then you have a look at the Stabber, which is what we, is a Mimitar uh, ship. They balance shields and armor, so they generally have um, a good balance between shields and armor. And the Caracal, which is the, the ship that I'm flying, this is called a shield tank, and it actually has a much, much higher uh, shielding value with a higher shield recharge. And the numbers that you're seeing here, um, the shield value is the HP followed by the shield recharge rate. The higher the number in general, when the shield gets damaged, the quicker it's going to recharge because it recharges a certain amount um, um, over over a period of time so the higher the number generally means the quicker the recharge when it gets damaged then having a look at the defenses you can see that those little bars below the shields and armor what you'll notice is that shields have no defense against electromagnetic 20 percent defense against thermal but 40 and 50 percent respectively against kinetic and explosive you'll notice that armor has 50 percent defense and 45 percent defense against electromagnetic and thermal respectively but only 25 percent and 10 percent defense against kinetic and explosive respectively then the structure has a 33 percent defense across the board against every damage type what this defense means is it reduces the damage incoming by that percentage. This is your base defense percentage, and anything else that you use to boost these certain these defense percentages is going to be multiplicative and not additive. So you're going to notice that with shields, you're going to reduce all explosive damage incoming by 50%, and armor is going to reduce all electromagnetic damage incoming by 50% as well. So then taking a look at the calculations, as this is a pretty important part. The first reduction that I was just talking about there is flat. The second reduction is multiplic uh, multiplicative unless there is no resistance there in the first place. So let's take shield thermal resistance as an example. Let's say you have 20% flat, although uh, it's a little bit higher than that realistically. Then you rig it with something that gives you an extra 25% resistance of shield thermal. You're not going to get a 45% reduction from the rig that you just installed. What you're going to get is a multiplication. So it's best to think of the, the above. Instead of thinking of it as 20%, think of it as a decimal. I will be dealt 0.8 damage or 80% damage, or I will be dealt, dealt 0.75 damage to the 25%, as in, you know, in 75% of the original damage. So then you multiply those two together to give you a new decimal, which would be 0 0.6. So rigging something with 25% extra resist um, thermal resistance on shields with the already flat 20% that you had would actually give you an overall resistance of 40% instead of 45%. Still a really worthwhile addition to add in, but obviously you're not going to get the pure additive value. That obviously changes unless you have something like... Um, the anti-EM screen reinforcer, which gives your shield electromagnetic resistances. So for instance, this rig here is going to give your shield 35% electromagnetic resistance, which is going to be great because it covers your shield's weaknesses. But that's not 35% times zero. That does just give you the flat 35% to begin with because there isn't any other shielding resistance to multiply it by. So that's something that is a little bit of an exception to the rule. This is a, a really cool graph that I found online, and it talks about the types of damage that each of the individual, um, the types of damage that each of the individual uh, NPC factions deal, and the type of damage that they are weak to. Um, I'm not going to go through all of this in detail, uh, and what I do want to mention is that um, specifically when we were talking about the drones earlier, the drones in this game are different to EVE Online from what I can work out. EVE Online, depending on the faction of drone that you chose, it dealt a certain type of damage. Amar dealt electromagnetic, um, I believe uh, Galente dealt thermal, blah, you know, blah, 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 blah. It, it basically depended, it depended on the type of drone that you're using. It doesn't seem to be clear in EVE Echoes that that is the case for the type of drone choice. At least they don't make it clear on the infographic of the drone. Um, so I feel that drones are like missiles and they just deal 25% of everything, but don't quote me on that. I I, I can't I have to ask the developers in an AMA because I'm not entirely sure maybe it's something they plan to implement later on but the, the the impression that I get from Eve Echoes is that it's trying to dumb down Eve Online for the mobile audience it's still complex it still has a lot of depth but they're trying to reduce some of that complexity to Eve Online but you'll notice here that for instance I farm angels um, generally because 
Well, actually, I could farm anyone because I'm using missiles, but I'm currently farming a a a angels. But they are weak to explosive. Blood Raiders and uh, and Sancha are, are weak to electromagnetic. Just basically, look at this list and it'll tell you the type of um, anomaly and what type of damage that it's weak to. It's a really, really cool graph. Hey, guys. So I want to do this quickly while I am... Um, uh, while I'm... <coughs> currently not under attack by uh under attack by pirates because there have been some guys warping in here uh looks like the guy that warped in actually left the system entirely so maybe i scared him off doing a quick combat tutorial pve especially now obviously your combat styles are going to differ greatly depending on what type of um uh, weapons you're using i'm a missile boat so what i like to do is maintain massive range from the spawn point usually like 70 to 80 kilometers and then wait for each of the individual uh, ship types to separate off from the pack because there is no real fleet coordination when it comes to um, to ratting. They basically just run at you like headless chickens. And then I like to pick them off one by one as they come towards me. Um, so, some couple of rules of thumb when you are, especially when you're uh, ratting in Nullsec. Firstly, you want to make sure there are a couple of things turned off in your scanning overlay. You want to make sure the asteroids are turned off, celestial bodies. You want to make sure, so these ones here, you want to make sure that asteroid belts, well, you don't need to make sure that asteroid belts are turned off, but I turn them off just for ease. Um, and you also want to make sure wrecks that are turned off, um, at least while you're doing the killing. I'll show you why. If I turn on wrecks and, and also asteroids, my entire local gets clogged up with asteroids and wrecks and everything. So what I do is I turn those off, wreck and asteroids, and there you go. It's just the units that I'm worried about killing. So when it comes to targeting, um, and I find that this is especially the case when I'm playing a missile boat. In fact, I'm actually going to wait until the next wave to show you exactly what I mean. Um, so I'm going to wait for this wave to die, and then I'm going to show you what I mean when it comes to targeting. Because there is, in my eyes, a, a good way to deal with PvE waves. Um, and it often comes with taking out the weakest first. And especially when you're playing something like a missile boat, and I'm running heavy missiles, and they are not particularly good against some of the weaker targets. Um... I will I will specifically show you what I mean when the next wave pops up because there's going to be uh, ships of all types. I'm going to show you which ones I target first, let my missiles do the work because they're the quickest, and then we get to it. All right, okay, so the next wave has spawned. What I'm going to show you is they're quite far away. This is kind of what I like to do as a missile boat. I kind of like, like them to come to me. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the ones that I want to specifically target. Uh, you can see that they've started to lock me on here. Some of them have started to lock on. The little the little um, orange boxes turning to red boxes is generally just showing you who is locking you right now. And you can see that some of the quicker ships have finally got into lock distance. And some of them are firing from like 100 kilometers away. It's just never going to work. When I'm playing a missile boat, what I like to do is, especially because we, we've got 100 kilometers to, to, to close the distance here and they are definitely definitely going to separate out ship types over 100 uh, 100 kilometers i like to take out the fast and small ships really quickly um mainly because i'm not running a, a setup that deals with frigates particularly well so i try to look for some of the smaller ships you can generally assess the size of the ship based on the size of the triangle but i'll show you exactly what they mean in just a moment in this particular setup here i can see they've got three fr frigates they've got three cruisers and three battle cruisers so i'm just going to lock um a cruiser after i've locked a third frigate i'm going to turn on my energy nosferatu uh, and we're going to wait for them to get into uh, into range of me i'm going to show you what each of those individual symbols do, do mean though capsule is like a little heart upside down heart symbol uh frigates are a small triangle destroyers are a small triangle with a line under them cruisers are a slightly blocky triangle uh more like a i guess like a pentagon um, you know, like one of those weird house-shaped pentagons. Battle cruisers are a, uh, a house-shaped pentagon with a line under it, and battleships are kind of like an army stripe. You know, the uh, the sort of the army, the classic army stripe that goes on the shoulder. So for me, when I'm playing my particular ship, I like to make sure that I take out the frigates first. The frigates are going to be the ones that reach me the quickest, and you can see that they have kind of separated out uh, by ship type already. The battle cruisers take a lot longer to get into position than the frigates do. Now, I can't actually attack them yet, because all of your weapons will have a specific range. If I show you, the range on my Calvary Navy Heavy Missile Launcher is 68 kilometers. So he's actually 66 now, so I can actually pop that. 
I can start to fire missiles at that incoming frigate. And that will start to take him out before he gets into an engagement range with me. One of the best things about missile boats is you generally do your damage so far away the NPCs can't actually get back at you easily. Um, and so that's one of the best ways that I like to play these ratings. I'm actually doing, right now, tier 9 anomalies in a level 5 Caracal, a tier 5 Caracal with tier 7 equipment, and even my energy Nosferatu is, is completely the wrong size. I haven't even got amazing uh, equipment, like the, the warp disruptor is completely useless in PvE for the most part. Um, and then I've got my Kaldari Navy heavy launchers, which are actually the most expensive launchers that I can get my hands on, but they're only about 3 million apiece. So it was 12 million to fit out my, uh, my Caracal, which I built myself with a blueprint. Um, yeah, and you can see, like, I'm actually making really good money. Uh, I started this morning with about 10 million. Uh, I've ended up now, I'm probably going to end up having somewhere about, once I sell all my pieces, I might go back with maybe like 50 million, 60 million, and then I can start to work towards a bigger and better ship that I want to work with. Probably another missile boat of some shape or form, maybe the Drake when I go up to, t uh, to tech level 8. Um, but this is a really, really good way to make money, and also to PvE very safely, which is what I'm doing right now, and you can see very easily just clearing out those frigates before they even get into engagement range of me. Uh, one of the things that you do need to, to be aware of is having good defensive equipment. Uh, I like to run a shield tank, which means I like to have a shield hardener and I like to have a shield booster. Uh, I would also um, maybe replace my... Um if you didn't want to run a movement thing like a micro warp drive or an afterburner, you could run a shield extender. But for me, if I ever take some damage to my shield, what I do is I pop my capacitor battery, which I think is incredibly important to have in Nullsec. I would thoroughly recommend if you're running a cruiser that you have a capacitor battery. Uh, and then I like to pop my shield booster while my capacitor battery is active. So I just pop it all the way. It bumps me back up to 100% shield while I'm taking out the frigates. You see, you saw it did take quite a while for me to get through those frigates. But in the meantime... Um, the battle cruisers have only just got into range, and the uh, and the cruisers themselves are actually being focused down now as well. I think I actually took out a stray cruiser while I was taking out the the frigates at the same time. I mean, I've I've barely been touched this entire time, and now I'm just going to pop that shield booster off, wait for my capacitor ba battery to come back online, and just continue what I'm doing. What I'm doing, I'm going to clear out a tier nine anomaly wave with relative ease whilst being untouched. And the other thing to remember is you kind of want to keep looking at local, at least keep local open as much as possible. I like to see who is in the area, so there's only me in the area right now, so I'm not worried about getting ganked. But if there are more than one person in the area, keep your nearby radar up. If anybody with a white ship symbol jumps in, they're pretty easily identifiable from NPCs. That is a an enemy player or a friendly player, you never know, but in Nullsec it's good to assume everybody is, is an enemy. You want to quick take a look at their ship type. Um, if it's a ship type that you're scared of, something like, I, I don't like facing anything that is close range, like a, a Ferox or or any kind of um, auto-cannon-based, auto-cannon-based, uh, um, auto-cannon-based ships, because I'm a missile boat and I want to maintain range. So if they warp in close to me and I can't get out, then I just want to pop my micro-warp drive and try and warp out as quickly as possible. So you always just want to be aware of any any enemy NPC or enemy enemy players that warp into your area whilst you're doing this. But this is a, a generic kind of PvE combat tutorial. Just follow those steps, make sure you take out the smallest first, then focus on the largest. That's generally the best way to play um, PvE encounters. Uh, make sure that you're managing your defenses like I am. Pop my capacitor battery and then pop my shield booster again. Now obviously you're going to have, we, in the first part of this video we discussed armor tanking, shield tanking, and all the weapon types. So you'll have your own defensive options available to you, but this is what I like to do. Uh, I like shield tanking more than anything. Right, that's uh, that's it. Enjoy PvE, potentially PvP, and uh, we will we'll see you soon.